This is my hometown. It's nothing special. It's made up of houses, churches and shops, pubs, clubs and parks. And of course, one of these. A cenotaph. A central memorial originally intended to commemorate those who gave their lives during the Great War of 1914 to 1918, but now serving to remind us all of those who fought and died in subsequent conflicts too. It seems that despite the best of intentions, the Great War wasn't actually the war to end all wars, nor was it over by Christmas. Unveiled in 1928, the Cenotaph contains the names of over 700 local men who lost their lives during the First and Second World War. Today that respect seems to be fading, and with it, the acknowledgement, the understanding of just what so many of our forefathers fought for, particularly those who fought and fell in the Second World War, fighting fascism and the Nazi threat. The memory is fading, the respect is fading, and as it fades, the threat rises once again. Lest we forget. Nobody's suggesting that British society has become less respectful of our serving soldiers. On the contrary, the civilian population tends to bend over backwards to show our thanks for those who fight and die in defense of our country. And that's how it should be. But the attitude behind that respect is changing. During World War II, the British people, along with allies from across the globe, fought against Hitler's Nazism. They fought and died to defeat a regime of totalitarian cruelty, of discrimination based upon race, religion, and even region of birth. Eventually, after five and a half long years and unimaginable hardship and loss, the scourge of Nazism was defeated. Only then, at the end of the war, did the full horror of Nazism become widely known, the horrors of the Holocaust, the brutal treatment of foreigners, the widespread use of slave labor, and the mythology of nationalism leading to such abuses of human rights that the world's first international war crimes tribunals had to be held in Nuremberg, the site of Hitler's most triumphant rallies. And all of this raised a number of questions, not least of which, how? How did Adolf Hitler manage to turn a modern, sophisticated, Western state like Germany into a country capable of such cruelty, such bigotry, such nationalistic fervor that they were prepared to create and endorse and even fight for such atrocities? This short film aims to answer that question not only from an historical perspective, but from a current affairs point of view too. For over a decade now, I've been speaking to anyone who's prepared to listen about the path we're on in modern UK, and not just here, across the developed world. This isn't about Godwin's law, the internet trope that says that the first one to cry Nazi loses the argument. This isn't a general accusation about the British people. There are Nazis in Britain, but they're few and far between. This is about the way that ordinary people are being duped by provocateurs, by rabble-rousers, by cynical politicians into accepting fascist and Nazi policies without even realizing. It's an expose, not an accusation. It's a heartfelt plea to the millions of decent people here in my beloved UK to stop, to look around, to see what's happening, and to see where we're heading, lest we forget. <laughs>